that. Um, yeah, let's get started. I am uh, Charlie Bathgate. I'm here for, uh, we're, we're launching the fourth installment in our series. Yeah, the fourth installment in our uh, Adapt or Die series. Um, my guest today is the one and only Spencer Regal. Spencer, say what's up, everybody. What's up, everybody? Thanks for coming. Spencer's joining us. He's usually down in the trade space offices in Puerto Rico, but he's uh, traveling right now. He's at home with family. So uh, he's gracious enough to bring all of his equipment with him on the road, which I always make him do whenever he does that. So thank you for doing that, Spence. Um, and we are here today, of course, as I said, for the fourth installment in, in the series, our adapt or die series. If you guys, if you're just joining this, or if you're watching on YouTube and you haven't seen the previous four episodes, uh, go back and check them out. There's some really great content in there. Some really great advice from, uh, we've got about a hundred years of trading experience so far on those, on those, uh, episodes. And uh, every single person who's on there is still trading at a very, very high professional level, you know, despite being a dinosaur like Ronch and still doing it, uh, still doing it for as long as they have. So um, definitely go check those out. And um, today we're here to talk to Spencer, uh, mostly about crypto trading, right? I mean, it's been pretty cool so far in this series. As I've said, we've had a lot of experience on here. Spencer, as you all can see, is younger. He's he's a relatively he's a relative young gun in the game. He's not he's not 19 like he was when he first started working with us. Uh, how old were you when first? 17, 18? How old were you when first started working with us? Um, it was probably 19 or 20, I would say. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because you were in exactly, college, you were yeah. you were you were senior year in college. I think yes, yeah, yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I think you were senior. Year it was college, junior so yeah. senior. So you were probably 19 or 20, um, which was now like five years ago. Um, yeah, I know, which is crazy. I got to say, we're all all of us who've like been in the company for a little bit are having our own like little like tearful, mo prideful moment right now. Seeing Spencer like hosting, anchoring a webinar and talking about his experience, because when this kid joined us in the beginning, he was a knucklehead. He was interning <laughs> for us. He was you know, on Slack, talking to us during the middle of class, not paying attention at all in class and talking to us. And we were just like this, you know, is this guy going to make it? We don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, and look where he's at now. We're going to talk about all that. So uh, pretty cool, Spence, to see you here, see what you've see what you've been able to accomplish, man. It's been awesome. Um, so uh, I'll do the uh, quick plug for the master course here. The whole reason we're doing this series is because the, the next Sanglucci Master Course starts on Monday. That's that live session of the Sanglucci Master Course starts Monday night, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. We do have a discount running right now. You can save 500 bucks on that if you use coupon code MASTER500 at checkout. That will be uh, available up until Monday night at 7.30. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Spencer's contribution to that course uh, in this session. But of course, if you have any questions or anything, shoot us an email or use the help chat on the website and we'll get you your questions answered. So, Spence, um, I mean, where to begin with you, man? Like, you maybe let's just start from, well, let's, let's start with where you're at now and what you, how you're spending your time on a day to day now. And then we'll kind of go back to more to the beginning. Let's do that. Yeah. So right now, uh, I spend most of my time in by most of my time. I mean, these markets never close, right? So uh, I spend it trading some of these coins, right? So predominantly Bitcoin, Ether, um, all coins do present unique opportunities. Um, and then I'm super interested in the option space, DeFi space, all the new products that are kind of being rolled out. Um, and now that we're in a bear market, I'm actively getting involved with some of these companies and, and really kind of getting in at the ground level, helping them build, you know, um, these are some of the, some of the smartest people I've ever met are in this space and they're actively building and, and they don't care about the price. Um, so I was less interested when the price of Bitcoin was going up every single day. And now I'm a lot more interested to get on the ground level with a lot of people in the space and, and really kind of build alongside with them. Yeah. That's kind of your personality. You seek out difficulty and pain. That's I like know. How, that's how you're wired for better or for worse, right? <laughs> for better or for worse. Definitely. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, whenever we go down to Puerto Rico and we're hanging out with Spencer, he's always like, he's always disappearing to the gym for like two hours to go do some workout. That's just fucking brutal. And we're like, why are you doing this to yourself? And he's like, I don't know, but I like it. So it seems like that applies everywhere in your life, not just in the, in the gym. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's a behavioral trait that I kind of recognized later. <laughs> I never understood why, but yeah, it definitely is something. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're, you know, you got your hands in a lot of different projects that are, that are launching in the space. You're, you're helping um, Lucci a good bit on the fun side in terms of those crypto trading efforts. Um, and of course we are pulling you in to, to help out with some of our education efforts in terms of crypto and, and product development stuff that we, we aren't really talking about publicly, but um, you're, you got your hands in a lot of different pieces of the pie here. Um, so let's go back to like, let's retrace kind of how you, how you got to this point, man. So, you know, I remember when we first started talking, you emailed us. It was actually ironically about the master course, like, uh, uh, the scholarship, we used to run a scholarship program for the master course and you applied for it. And I was like, well, you didn't win this, but what's, what's your deal? Talk, you know, what's going on with you. And we just started talking. Um, and obviously saw a lot of, uh, of really positive qualities in you back then. So what was going on in your life then? What was happening? How were you, were you trading crypto then too? I mean, this was like five years ago, like we said, so different kind of different world. Yeah. Um, I mean, what was going on in my life then? I was a junior in college. I think, honestly, if we go back to the first kind of conversations I was having about the stock market, I believe I was nine years old. For some reason, I was this memory. I was sitting in the back of a car with my dad and I was like, I want to buy stocks. I'm nine years old. And he's like, yeah, OK, you get an allowance. We'll do that. And I was like, OK, but you need to be 16 to open a brokerage. You got to do all these kind of things. Um, so I ditched the whole idea. But um, at that age, I was in college, right? It was, I think it was my second year at a uh, four-year university. So I went to Michigan State. Um, and it was the first semester I was at Michigan State that I realized how expensive college was, right? So uh, where I'm from, you get, a, you get a two years free from a community college if you want it, right? Um, and that's sponsored by uh, Kellogg's, right? So Kellogg's is headquartered here um, and they give it out to all the inner city schools. So um, that was my first kind of real world experience. I said, you know what? This doesn't really make sense. This is $25,000 a year, 7% interest. I got to get ahead of the curve, right? And so I was reflecting on some of those previous conversations at such a young age and saying, okay, this is how I've seen other people do it. I have to do this. I don't know anything about it, right? And when I don't know anything about it and I actively want to learn something, I can be like the worst nightmare to anybody that wants to talk to me. Yep. And, um, and nice. slowly you open the door and you said, uh, yeah, you just kind of opened that lane. You gave me the opportunity and, and we started having conversations. Um, and then that was that was basically it from there. So and you were working. I mean, you were working. I remember at least one job right? When you were in college, yeah. if not, if not two, right? You were all, you were hustling like crazy, trying to obviously eat into that, that student debt that you were, you were building up. Um, and then you were trading at the same time, right? Yeah. So, um, I didn't have much money, right. And all the money I did have was probably FAFSA money at that particular point in time. Right. So, um, that covered rent that covered food and by food, I mean, maybe a couple potatoes and and a couple of eggs, <laughs> but um, on top of that, uh, I, I've always had jobs, right? So I've worked since I was 15. And um, I think at that particular time, I wasn't actively working, right? It was, it was my first year in, in four-year university, but the, the following year, um, I had the internship with you guys, and then I was a janitor. And then I ran this corner basically in the university where I would do all of their mowing. I would do all of their odds and ends, right? If they called me, I think they called me one day and they said, you know what? I got to get my, my garage cleaned. I will pay you. And I said, absolutely. I'll be there in 30 minutes, right? So the amount of time I actively spent in class and out of class, was, and there, was a, there was an interesting ratio there. <laughs> When you said I ran a corner, I really thought you were going to say something else. I thought this was going to be the moment that you revealed that you were like a big drug dealer in college. And I just never knew about it. But that was a different type of corner. You were doing like the 
lawn, you know, landscape yeah, and stuff definitely. like that. That's the, the above ground kind of corner maintenance. Um, yeah. Okay. So then, and so you're, you're back. I mean, you, you were obviously hustling your ass off. You got bit by the training bug. You were like, this is, this is where I, I want to be. Um, and you, then you, you kind of had, I mean, you've always been super into crypto and being in that world, but you also were very deep into the, you know, more traditional finance world of equities and equity options and trade and, and tape reading and flow trading, all the stuff that we do, that we do. You learned all of that from all of these guys. Like what, what has it been like for you as a trader to grow up surrounded by, you know, Lucci and Wall Street Jesus and Ron Chero and, and, and that sort of crew? Yeah, I mean, where I'm at today in my life is is attributed to everybody that surrounded me kind of through these years, right? So um, I've taken a little bit from everybody, right? And crypto, it seemed the reason I kind of migro- or migrated over into crypto was it came back. So the validity of the market kind of was solidified in my mind, right? All right, mm-hmm. we're back. It hasn't died. It's not the Tula bubble that everybody was kind of talking about. Um, and then I was looking at it and I saw the alpha that was there and I said, you know what, all of my stuff from traditional finance that I've been taught through the years, it's applicable here in a big way, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I take pieces from everybody, right? Right. So like Ranch, for instance, I'll take pieces of his risk management, right? Mm-hmm. I was talking about him yesterday about, all right, if I think Bitcoin's going to crash, how do we get back involved in this market and how do we actively hedge, right? Mm-hmm. There's options in this market and I can do the same exact strategy that he runs in the equities and crypto. Right. So I'm pulling in that, adding other pieces that exist in crypto. Um, and that's one piece. Right. The next piece is tape. Right. Tape from Lucci. That's where I grew up in. Right. And, mm-hmm. and that stuff totally exists in crypto. Right. So the, the sector rotation, seeing the bid, seeing liquidations. Right. So in the equities markets, things don't liquidate like they used to. Right. Because there's so much liquidity. Mm-hmm. But in crypto, you have access to 100x leverage. You have access to even more leverage, right? So things liquidate. And when they liquidate, they liquidate bad. Um, and so being there, being active on the tape, being able to uh, kind of assess that situation, that's from Lucci, right? Um, and then Jesus, right? Sector rotation, being able to look at sectors and understand kind of how the money flows, right? Mm-hmm. So in crypto in particular, there's three big spaces, right? So you're going to have your major coins, right? So your Bitcoin. Um, and then you have your altcoins, right? And that's how they move, right? So everything kind of is denominated in Bitcoin, right? Mm-hmm. And you'll have big inflows to Bitcoin, for instance, over the last uh, week or so. And Bitcoin dominance will be a bid, right? What does that mean? Well, you can be sell side on all the altcoins and be a buyer of Bitcoin, right? To kind of protect capital. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's all Jesus. And so... Basically pulling all these kind of ideas from everything I've seen and applying it and then building on top of it because there's new products, right? There's not as much regulation and honestly, there's not much regulation. So yeah. there's new products that are being built. There's new opportunities within those products. And that's, I mean, I guess that's what I can attribute it to. Yeah. So when you are... I mean, one of the things that that always has sort of kept me honestly sort of out of the the crypto space is just like the rate of change. It's just always changing, right? I mean, this whole series is the adapt or die series, right? And we're talking about like, how do you adapt? How do you adapt to changing circumstances? How do you stay, you know, on top of things? Like with crypto, it's just the rate of change is crazy. There's always something new happening. And like the violence of the consequences of that change is severe. How do you how do you manage that dynamic and how, how has your experience of it been different than, you know, when you were trading mostly options and equity options? Yeah. I mean, I guess if you've never traded crypto, I went through 2017, my first introduction to crypto was early 2017, mid 2017. Um, So I went through the whole bubble of that and I went through 2018, 2019, and I was just actively passively watching it. I was never involved at the scale as I am now. Mm -hmm. Um, But I felt the pain of 2018, right? And so if you're in traditional finance, this is probably the first actual bear market that you've ever seen. And I don't even know if we can call this a real bear market yet. Um, So for me, it's been the recognition that 
tomorrow doesn't have to be the same as today. And oftentimes it doesn't. And then there's often a disbelief in some of these projects because they work today and they might not work tomorrow, right? For instance, mm-hmm. Luna. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's how I've been able to kind of adapt. And honestly, last year in particular, you could have bought anything and made 5X, 10X, 20X your money, right? This year is not the same, right? So mm-hmm. this year is another beast. Um, and just being able to see kind of the market as it is and understanding some of the traditional stuff that I understand has kept me alive. Mm-hmm. So you say like, just see the market for as it is, right? Like that's, mm. that's, that's the Holy grail. That's what everybody wants is to see it clearly and not allow their biases and their emotions and the stories and, and everything to, to take the wheel. Um, how are you, how do you do that? How do you try and see it as it is? There's a couple of things. One is you got to recognize you're wrong, right? So I think this is a sobering comment that still holds true to this day. Everybody wants to believe Bitcoin is decoupling from equities markets, and it is this safe haven asset. The truth is it trades like a risk on asset, right? And so if it's a risk on asset, treat it as a risk on asset, right? And the moment that it changes is the moment that we can treat it like anything else, right? So um last year everything was risk on buying it was a great idea right trading some of the volatility was a great idea this year it took me a little bit to get used to hey we're in a different environment you know every pop is probably going to get sold into right and if that's the case i'm wrong right so Mm -hmm. it took me getting beat on the head for for two months straight to say i'm wrong let's look at the market differently um so i took a couple weeks off i looked at the market and that was it. That was it. Um, just being honest with yourself is kind of some of the biggest, biggest things that I've learned. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and when you talk about that, the way that you're talking about, you're echoing a lot of what Lucci said in his, uh, in, in his episode in this. And actually just so everybody knows, we're going to bring Lucci back again tomorrow. We, this wasn't previously scheduled, but we're going to do another conversation with Lucci tomorrow uh, at noon on Friday that we're taping this on Thursday. So uh, we're going to have another another conversation with Lucci, but what you're, a lot of what you're talking about is sounds straight out of Lucci's mouth, right? right. Stubborn, like ram your head against, against the wall for, for a little bit, then have a moment where you're just like, okay, I'm wrong. Take a step back, recalibrate, get back in. Do you, I mean, is that, do you feel like just sitting next to Lucci for the past however long it's been two and a half years, three years that you've been down there? Is that when you, is that how you started you know, being able to do stuff like that? Or how do you, how do you characterize that? Um, I mean, sitting next to Lucci has definitely helped, right? He is brutally honest to the type of food I eat, right? Um, So (laughs) if I'm wrong and I don't know I'm wrong um, and my P&L is not telling me I'm like actively wrong, he'll tell me, right? right? So that definitely helps. Um, I think having a group of uh, accountability is super helpful, right? Um, I mean, I guess, I mean, you can call this, we're just actively, uh, prog- or projecting our opinions on the market where they're right or we're wrong. Right. But the stubbornness is what's going to get you killed. Mm-hmm. Right. And so for him to be like, you're being an idiot change makes you take a step back. Even if, even if you fight and you say, no, I'm not, you're the idiot, blah, 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 blah. Right. And you go back because you have this little ego battle. You're going to think about that moment. Right. And the moment you think about that moment in in yourself and you look yourself in the mirror, you're going to say, all right, there's truth here. Uh, how can I adjust? And if my PL is not reflecting this, uh, how do I how do I move out here? Right. So the name of the game is making money. If you're not making money, then then you're not winning the game. So. So that that touched on something I want to talk to you about, like, how do you use the people around you? Because you're you know, obviously you're not in Puerto Rico right now, like we said, you're, you're, you know, visiting family, but for the most part, you're down in Puerto Rico, you're in the trade space offices, you're surrounded by other traders who are trading the same shit that you are. A lot of these traders are doing it at with serious size, you know, how do you use them to inform calibrate your trading? Yeah. So um, the reason I left Michigan was I tried to actively find people that were doing trading, right? Essentially. Um, I couldn't find a single person, right? Even at university, I couldn't, I, there was maybe one person and, and the way they were doing it, we would reach out and text and that kind of thing, but there wasn't, there wasn't any 
kind of development from that relationship, right? So I sought out for other people that are doing this. And through that, um, I got involved with uh, the Wall Street Jesus community, the St. Lucci team, and just actively kept pestering people, right? And kept, you know, Lu I think the, the day I moved to Puerto Rico, I texted Lucci, I said, hey, I'm going to show up. And he's like, no, you're not. And I said, okay, see you in two weeks. I already bought the ticket, so I'm coming, right? So I just show up. And um, I think being around those people, it's transcended everything I've learned, right? Um, it's one thing to see traders online, right? It's another thing to watch them go through the same thing you're actively going through. Um, and I mean, the big wins and the massive losses and the risk management and how they live their lives, right? Um, there's traders that I've seen that treat this like a, like a high performance sport. They are to bed by eight, they're up by four, they trade all day, right? And the like the returns reflect it. There's other traders that I see, you know what? They treat it less like a high performance sport. And because of that, that lack of attachment to the markets, they're able to outperform, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, it's like it's the athlete been, who there's some athletes who need to be in bed by eight and there's some athletes who play better hungover and you got to understand what works for you, right? I kid you not. Yes. And yeah. so I think it was eye opening to kind of see the, the variation within the trader, right? Mm -hmm. um, the recognition that every single person has that one skill that they bring to the market mm -hmm. and figuring out what that is, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and then also finding your weakness, right? And I've been able to recognize my weakness faster by seeing how others kind of analyze themselves. Mm -hmm. That's how I would say it. Yeah. So in, in watching some of these guys, like what, are there any examples you have, stories you have of, um, and I say guys, I, I mean, uh, you know, gender neutral guys, women, you know, women as well, inclusive. Um, are there stories of traders down there who, uh, people who you admire who were stuck, they couldn't, they could, they, it wasn't working, they were struggling hard and then they were able to adapt and what, like what, what lessons did you pull from that? What, what, what have you learned from watching them go through tough times? I think the biggest lesson that I've kind of witnessed is a trader that takes a loss. If they're willing to stand up the next day, it doesn't matter if they trade, if they're willing to stand up, they have a shot at making it all back. Right. You, you mean um, like, you mean like literally stand up out of bed? Yeah, stand up and, and get to the screens, right? So right. like, right. whether that's you take maybe three days off, you clear your head, those kind of things. But if you're actively doing something to get back to the screens, you have a shot at it, right? And it sounds cliche, but I've seen people take massive hits at the age, of what, I was like 23 and I saw people losing tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. And I guess in terms of percentages, that might be 50% of their account, 70% of their account. They're dealing with big accounts, right? Um, yeah. But in terms of percentages, that, that would destroy most people, right? You lose 70% of your liquidity, what are you going to do? You're going to mope. You're going you're gonna to think about, you know what, maybe this game isn't for me. And everybody kind of goes through that, that second guessing, right? Your confidence is absolutely destroyed. Mm -hmm. These people, they go through the same things, right? They, they second guess themselves. But instead of getting kicked to the curb, they sit on the curb maybe for like two days and then they stand back up and then they get to the screens, right? And to me, um, I've seen a guy that lost 70% of his liquidity in his account. Next morning, 4 a.m., he was at the desk. Right. Took him a whole year to get it back. He got it back and he's at his highs and he's destroying this market right now. Right. And to me, that was like most the one of the most profound things that I've ever seen. I said, wow, you can get dragged through the dirt as much as you want, but if you get back up, you got a shot. Yeah. Yeah. So. As long as you, as long as you keep your seat at the table and sit down in the seat, I suppose, as we always, yeah. we always say, you know, you can't lose your seat at the table. That's rule number one, but you also got to have, you got to be able to sit down at the table too. just, you know, <laughs> it's the seats true. there. So this is true. Um, so you know, we touched on this a little bit and in some of these questions, we're getting some questions in the chat about that are more like tactical questions about, you know, how to navigate these markets. And we will definitely get to some of those for sure. So, you know, if you have questions for Spence about like, 
actually how he's trading or how he looks at, at crypto markets right now um to the extent that he can answer them he's not you know, giving away the farm um you know he he will answer those um but and you and you touched on this a little bit in the beginning spence but in terms of you know principles things that you learned from uh you know from these guys in sort of traditional trading and equities and, and uh equity options and stuff like that how is it i mean are there a couple lessons that you feel like float to the top in terms of things that are just true you know in all markets i mean is it is it sort of tape what you were talking about like tape is everywhere you just have to find it yeah tape is literally everywhere right i can't go i can't go to the supermarket i can't go to a park anymore without seeing tape, right? Seeing how people react, seeing the psychology behind the buyer, the seller, et cetera, right? Um, it's literally in every single market. And once you, once you immerse yourself in kind of the ideas and the ideology behind it, it will change you forever. I don't know if it's a good thing. I don't know if it's a bad thing, but it will definitely change you Now that you've you seen it, now that you're like Neo in the Matrix, now that you've seen it, you can't <laughs> unsee it. You just see code everywhere. You can't, you definitely can't. I got you. Um, what else? What else comes up? Um, I don't know. I would say, I would say it's. I mean, TradFi and and crypto in particular are they're the same players, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's just a little more volatility in crypto, I would say, on a daily basis, but they're the same players. So the ideas that you learn in traditional finance definitely come over to crypto, and those people are coming over, right? So you're seeing some of the big funds. Um, I think what you're even seeing like Citadel come out and, and saying, yeah, we're actively involved now, mm -hmm. uh, whereas previously they dismissed the whole idea, right? If so, if players like that are coming into the space, they definitely see alpha that they can exploit. And um, I would say things kind of just carry over in that kind of that, that realm. Have you seen as, as some of these instruments have evolved and as um, more sophisticated sort of traditional players have come into crypto, have you seen like behavioral patterns that you that weren't there before that you did associate with traditional finance show up like buy programs like that like just you're like oh this is a sort of citadel esque you know buyer right here a hundred percent so the yeah. I mean the market cap of what uh, of crypto is like less than I mean at the peak it was like two trillion maybe three trillion um, and right. now it's way less than that right and then you got the paper space that's that's bigger than that but um. Yeah, I see a change every single like month. And I'm like, okay, new players here, right? And because it's so small, if you get into these communities, you, I mean, sometimes you know when to step out of the way because you know who's there, right? Whereas in equities markets, it's so big and it's so liquid that I don't know, it could be anybody. It could be anybody from around the world, right? But this space is much smaller. And once you get in with the, the bigger crews and you see who's actually moving the money, you're like, okay, I can see, I can see who's pushing this tape or you'll see, you'll open up um, some of your tape off in New York open. Right. And somebody will execute a TWAP, right. And TWAP is a, a what is it? A weighted average uh, price. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you'll just see them hitting the bid every single second for 15 minutes, the bid will drop and then boom, they'll buy it back. Right. And so there's just different like things that you can see um, because most funds are not actively trading aggressively in here yet. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, you can definitely see those kind of things. Got you. So what about the differences? Like if someone's coming in from, they're like, dude, I've been trading options, you know, Netflix options for the last 10 years. Now I'm going to start trading crypto. What do you think is, is like, the biggest surprise for somebody like that what's 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 really different uh how expensive they are <laughs> <laughs> so i think what uh bitcoin was like 120 ball last year it's around i mean we touched like close to 150 recently off of the whole luna debacle mm -hmm. um but we're back i think this morning we we're around 73 75 and a lot of these new um, options that are getting rolled out, they're expensive, right? So I'll actively talk to the market makers and say, okay, next time, let's price these a little bit lower or let me sell them with you because this is outrageous. Nobody's making money buying these. Um, so there's unique opportunities on both sides of the ball curve that are super interesting right now. Um, and I think it's in something that, is super unique to the spaces. There's daily options, 
right? So I have a couple options that are going to expire in 11, 10 hours, right? Yep. 10 hours. Um, and then I'll go write some for tomorrow. I'll go write some for the next day, Sunday. I mean, I'll ping the desk on a Sunday. It'll be Easter Sunday. And then I'll be like, you know what? Can you sell me some, some 50K calls or something? And they're like, you know, it's Easter, right? And I said, isn't the casino always open? <laughs> so <laughs> so there's interesting. What's your problem? Yeah, there's interesting, there's interesting pieces um, on both sides right now. It's a it's new products are being rolled out and um, it's super cool. So oh. it's awesome. Um I mean, I could keep peppering you with questions, but you're getting a lot of questions in the chat. So um, let's, can you explain to people what, you know, you and Lucci have been working on two, there's actually two crypto courses. There's a beginner course and an intermediate course. Um, you guys have been working on this for six months at least, Yeah. right? Yep. Um, can you talk to people, you maybe start with the beginner course and then the intermediate course and just talk to people about what, um, what, what they learn from those? Yeah, definitely. So um, intro is going to be, I mean, it's going to take you from basically zero to hopefully like two, right? Intermediate will take you to five. And then when we get to the advanced, it'll take you to 10, 10 being the highest, right? And um, the reason that the advanced will probably be live is because we're actively learning a lot of this stuff as we go, right? So we're applying a lot of the traditional stuff that's being taught already in the master course um, and applying it to this new space. But in particular, uh, some of the coolest things that I like to or like to add were the arbitrage, right? So some of the arbitrage that exists, some of the DeFi stuff that exists, um, mm -hmm. talking about, I mean, adapt or die, right? What am I doing in this particular time when when Bitcoin is not really moving that much? I'm looking at delta neutral strategy or delta neutral strategies, right? So if I can outperform the market and I can find a way to leg into this down move. Then I'm then I'm doing good. So we talk about that all in the uh, in the course. Um, talk about pinging some of these OTC desks. Who's on the other side of these trades? Talk about some of the bigger players, what they're doing, um, and really how to view the market. So, so somebody who gets to you know the end, they, they take the intermediate court intermediate course. They'll be able to competently trade these instruments that you're talking about, like, you know, the, the major, the major coins, you're not going into like super sort of fringe world. Are you, what are we thinking about? I don't think so. Right? Um, so we, we touch on it, uh, yeah. but we talk with, so uh, in crypto, right. There's these telegram chats that are like, buy these coins. Right. So we go behind the scenes, who's actually making the money and it's not you buying the actual coins. Right. So kind of understanding how to tiptoe around this space. And I say tiptoe because it can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Um, so actively looking at um, some of the documentation, the white paper, how to assess inflation. Right. So a lot of these economics behind these tokens are just way off. Right. So right there, it'll give you an amazing trade idea. Sell it because this thing is going to inflate 200 percent this year. And if there's not a buyer, that's got to get reflected in the price. Right. So a lot of that documentation kind of behind the scenes stuff um, when viewing the market. So you'll be able to trade these markets, you know, at, at a at a competent level, a proficient level, yes. and also be able to evaluate new markets, new coins, be able to sniff out the bullshit from from what's actually worth, you know, spending your time on. Um, got you. Um, Definitely. So yeah. So like we've we've said before, uh, new new members of the master course are going to get access to these crypto courses for free. Uh, previous members of the master course, the master course is a lifetime membership. So if you were if you bought, you know, uh, before a previous live session, um, we can't give away for free, but you're going to get like an insanely, uh, insanely thick discount. So you'll be contacted about that. But if you're new to the master course, um, you will get access for free this time around. So um, yeah, you can always, um, and like we said, you can sign up, you can save 500 bucks on uh, sangluchi.com forward slash MC and use coupon code master 500. Um, let's, let's get some spent some, some questions, man. Uh, what is your day-to-day -day type of trade? Are you scalping, swinging, building longer term combo of all of the above? Like, you know, what are you actually doing right now? Um, right now. So for instance, I mean, I took after Luna, blow up. That was a, a big week. I honestly just took a step off. 
um, and just have been waiting, kind of seeing the aftermath, because once that kind of stuff happens, it's kind of unclear where that where that paper kind of spreads. Um, today, over the last few days, I've been actively trading, right? So I'll look at some of these altcoins that are moving, see, all right, why is it moving? Is there's news catalyst? Is there is there something that I think is going to be wrong with this coin in the future? And then, um, and then for the most part, I'm on south side of the options, right? Bitcoin, Ether, um, looking at some directional moves, right? So today, for instance, I put a couple, uh, a couple put spreads on Ether, right? Just looking for that next move down. If it happens, if it doesn't, I'll work around that with some spot positions um, and and really take some of the. The other sides of those trades, right? So most of the time, it's going to be options sell side. Uh, when altcoins go crazy, I'm actively involved in altcoins every single day. Yeah. So, uh, what do you advise newbies getting in the crypto space to practice trading coins versus yield farming, liquidity pools versus minting coins, or do all three? Uh, it depends, right? So yield farm is a great question. So the question is, how much are you going to make today? How much are you going to make in the seven-day yield farm, right? Then what's the risk of that, right? A lot of these a lot of these yield farms, they have backdoor code problems, right? And I'm not saying a lot, but that is a risk, okay? And so you need to be aware of evaluating that. And then the other thing is, all right, let's say you can make 10% on this yield farm in seven days. You go over to the market and you say, all right, I got to take directional risk. I might only make 5%. Go to the yield farm every single day, right? Um that's a big part of my daily assessment is looking at rates across all markets, right? So even in some of these other brokerages, if you're outside of the United States, they'll actually pay you for US dollars, right? So you can lend out your US dollars. You don't even have to be in stable coins to the brokerage, right? And um, so there's just unique opportunities. And I would say that each of them presents a daily yield. Um, and if let's say you wanna go away for the weekend and you don't wanna be around the screens, I'm putting delta neutral strategies on, right? If you have them, um, if you have yield farms, you might as well make some money when when you're not actively trading. We got a bigger sort of macro question for you. Um, Spencer, are you expecting a similar bear market from 18 to 19 looking forward for 22 to, to uh, 2022 to 2023 in crypto? Yeah, so now that we're now that we're at 30,000, I mean, we'll see how the summer kind of goes by, but I'm not extremely bullish, I would say. <laughs> I think a lot of things macro wise are, are uncertain, right? So how do we deal with inflation? How do we deal with the war? How do we deal with um, a lot of these kind of black swan events? If those happen, I have a playbook already set, right? I have the options that I'll buy and, and that's it. You just go at it with those, right? Or, or short the futures. Um, I'm not saying that a black swan is going to happen. I'm saying I'm ready for it if it does. The other thing is black swans are in everybody's best interest to stop from happening, right? Because there's massive casualties on the other side. And that's why they present such the big opportunity. So the way I'm kind of working around it is stacking cash and putting a percentage of that cash towards that idea, right? If I hit, it's going to be 10 to 30 X. If I miss it's going to cost me maybe 20% of, of the profit that was already made. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Makes sense. Uh, being in the U S do crypto brokerages have access to covered call spreads, et cetera. So this is interesting. Um, they're actively rolling it out and, and it looks like the first retail um, brokerage that's going to be doing it is going to be FTX U S derivatives. Right. And so they already have an options market. It's not very liquid, um, but I've been actively looking at it in terms of some of their spreads, some of their uh, pricing on their options, just to see how they're kind of adjusting. I talked to their team as well, because I said, you know what, like this liquidity is horrible. Are you going to pull in a rebate or situation at some point? Um, and they said they had internal talks about that. And um, so that is a space that I'm actively watching. Um, if you have a decent amount of capital, if let's say you're an institution in particular, right? Um, there's this thing called an ECP. ECP is an eligible contract participant, right? And there's certain requirements under this ECP. One of them I think is 10 million net worth. Through that, 
You can trade through uh, some of these OTC firms. You can trade leverage on Kraken. You can do all these other kind of things, right? Currently, um, in the U.S., they're very strict on leverage, and there's reasons for that, right? They don't want a bunch of people just betting on Bitcoin 50x. It doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Um, so they're kind of in this limbo right now. I do think that space is going to grow and I think it's going to grow pretty fast. Um, so that is, that is going to be a unique opportunity. Another thing is, and I'm not actively saying, or I, Charlie, can we even say this? But <laughs> I don't, I would I don't say that say. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a proponent of this. This is not my advice. Good. There are other opportunities. Say, give more disclosures, more uh, cover your ass statements <laughs> like that. Yep. Go on. This is your own risk, uh, but there are other opportunities through non-KYC and non-AML uh, uh, brokerages, right? right? They could take all your money tomorrow. That's your risk. So be aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not here to tell anybody exactly what to do, but one, one of the things we are, we, they, these guys do do in the course is to tell people this is, this is what the risk reward is. This is, this is the logic for why people would, would make a certain decision. This is the logic why people wouldn't do that. And then it's up to everybody else, you know, up to everybody to determine their own risk threshold. So, um, yeah. Um, how would trading crypto work for, I mean, you basically just answered this. Um, all right. This is kind of a long one. Uh, hey guys. So I got more or less lucky and managed to clear close to my first million off of NFT and altcoin trading last year. Also round tripped around 3 million in the process started with like 20 K. That's awesome. Congrats. Uh, now I'm sort of in a weird state where I can't hold anything. I have no conviction in anything and it's dawning on me that I probably won't have a similar opportunity again. I went from absolute degenerate to absurd risk management, but I'm making no money now. And now I don't really know how to move forward. Should I just sit, sh should I just sit still till easy mode is back? Um, Spence, before you answer, this is something that has always fascinated me about, you know, doing, being in the business that we're in and teaching, um, teaching psychology and just having exposure to, you know, thousands of traders over the past 10 years that we've been doing this is, um, people so often feel like, well, once I make my first million, like every other problem will, will be smaller after that. Right. It'll, it'll be easy street. And to a certain extent, yeah, like you're right. But sometimes things just get way more complicated and the, the psychological stuff that comes up once you've had a really big trade, you've made a lot of money is really interesting. And it's just as substantial as, um, the problems that people face when they're trying to get a, you know, uh, PDT under PDT account off the ground. So For anyways, sure. Spence, what do you, what do you think? A couple of things. One, I would say take the course, right? Uh, the reason for that is uh, Ron Chero is going to, Ron Chero is going to take you through some risk management. Lucci is going to take you through some tape. Jesus is going to take you through some rotations and then you'll actively get, I mean, with the course, you'll get free to, to some of the crypto stuff, right? And through the crypto stuff, you're going to get some unique opportunities for Delta neutral strategies, right? And you don't have to run it on the full million, but you can run it on a, a portion of that capital to uh, to at least fulfill your need to make money, I guess. I mean, you 50x last year, a million bucks, you don't need a million bucks to live, you know? So um, the bull market will come again. And, and these prices, I mean, it's just a matter of time, right? So that's how I would assess the situation. And you don't have to actively trade. You made 50x. Yeah, I mean, this... Barl is Barl Marx is who asked this question. Um, most of the people who I've seen who have had a big windfall in a single market, like what you're talking about, um, the way that they've continued to scale and maintain any kind of you know similar level of return is to diversify into different types of markets, right, and trade different instruments because you're never going to get like like you just articulated in your question, Barl, like you're not going to get the same kind of opportunity at the same scale, the same return again in the same asset class, right? That's when people shoot themselves in the foot. They change, they chase the exact same uh, trade in the exact same place over and over again. And, you know, they shoot themselves in the foot. But when you have that level, that, that account size, there's a lot of strategies that open up to you that are not available to you at, at 20,000 in different asset classes. Um, and, you know, when you have that, that kind of size, you can sell options 
in a very well risk managed way uh, and see serious returns. And that's a lot of what these guys teach uh, in the course. So, you know, shameless plug there, but consider checking out the course. Um, Spence, I mean, is there anything else that you feel like you want to say to people just in terms of like the state of crypto markets now, or, you know, about, about the work you and Lucci have done on the course, like anything else that you want to make sure people understand? Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess in terms of the work on the course, we're actively, I mean, I can see myself adding a lot in the future, right? This market is so, it changes every single day. And I was in a podcast, uh, listening to a podcast earlier, and they said um, one and a half years in crypto is like 13 years in traditional equities. I don't know about that amount, but I do know that things move a lot faster here and they're very fast. Um, so the amount of opportunity that's being rolled out every single day, the amount of new ideas that are coming onto the scene is, is super interesting. So I think there will be always be a, a, a place to continue to add. Um, another thing is if you're in what, Charlie, the, uh, the chat room's free for crypto, correct? Uh, yes. Once we roll it out, it will, it will be free for people to come in there. Yeah. Yeah. So hop in there. We can actively talk. I'm in front of the screens every single day. So I'm super interested in anything that's being built um, and super open to new ideas. Um, the other piece is, yeah, that's, I mean, that's what I would say. I would say that currently the course is going to provide a lot of interesting ideas. Um, and my whole goal with the course was to open people's mind to crypto, right? The opportunity that kind of exists in there, right? So whether you're involved in it, currently or you've thought about it in the past or you've totally dismissed it at least take a look um and then and then at that point if it sucks it sucks <laughs> you know make your own decision from there yeah word well as i said the outset spence it's pretty cool to see you evolve and uh see you really become somebody who uh people look to a lot in this space and a lot of very smart you know successful traders are are picking up the phone and calling you when they want to know, you know, what's going on. So uh, props to you, man, for putting in the work, doing everything that you've done to get yourself to this point and uh, appreciate you hopping on. And for everybody who is uh, watching this here, join us tomorrow. Uh, Lucci and I are going to be talking at noon Eastern. We're going to keep this series going one more time before the, uh, the master course starts live on Monday night. So we'll see you all tomorrow. Spence, appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.